What's up guys? I am, well, really just getting back into the shop. I went on that snow goose hunt and it turned out to be a lot more of a adventure in hanging out in snow than we had hoped for. The hunting wasn't great. There weren't a lot of birds around. And the blizzard that was gonna be mostly north that was supposed to help the hunt out came too far south. And we spent four days just trying to stay warm. We were pretending we were hunting, but it didn't go so great. Uh, we set up in a different spot one day. We were out at three o'clock in the morning and set up like five or 600 decoys and a pit blind and a A-frame blind above ground that would hold 12 of us. I think there were 12 of us out there. And there's, there's some footage, I'll sprinkle that in here, but it, it didn't go well. We did not shoot many birds. We, the blizzards that we sat through were not good. Uh, in fact, we drove out of the blizzard on our way home on Tuesday afternoon. And some of us went south, some of us went east, some of us went west. And between the group of us parting different ways, we saw something like 15 semi-trucks upside down in the ditch. So the roads were terrible, the weather was terrible, and we were trying to hunt in all that. So it was fun, it was great to see those guys, but it was not the hunt we were hoping for. Anyway, now I'm back in the shop. I'm, I have all of my camera gear in here. Like I said, I took some video, but I didn't get like a full on cool hunt video out of it because there's no point in pulling my cameras out. There was just, there was nothing you could see. I pulled my phone out a couple of times just so I could kind of get footage for this purpose. And that's it. We, we didn't do much more than that. So I need to pack all the camera stuff back into where they go. I brought all the tools in from the barn from working on that deer stand just because I didn't want them out there and freezing and maybe if it could get wet in there, I didn't want that to happen. It's not as sealed up tight as the shop is here. Uh, so putting stuff away, three loader boards left in the clamps that I need to get out. And then I'm gonna break in the Jessam router table to start flushing things up and rounding over the edge and start getting that stuff going. But that's on the docket for today. What else? Uh, the first vlog video is out. If you're running into this one first by chance, you should go see that one. It kind of explains what I'm talking about right now. And I noticed in putting it together that the audio that comes straight off of my phone here is not great. So I'm looking for a microphone upgrade option that kind of evens things out a little bit. So bear with me. We're bringing that up, up to speed. Um, anyway, I'll check back in, it's time to get to work. All right, I am about to start using my new Jessam router table for the very first time, and I thought I would just show you a few things about it. Uh, I am putting in a small flush trim bit, and I'm going to trim up the edges. I, I cut these two different pieces out, the top and bottom layers out on the CNC machine, and it's, even though they're pretty close to perfect, they're not completely perfect. So I go run it around this thing once, upside down and then once right side up and that makes the two sides match just exactly the way I want them to. So that's the next operation. But check this thing out, it's pretty awesome. And all the cool features about it, the thing I think that is the most clever, the smartest, the thing I like the most, this monster of a motor that they have in here actually has two snorkels that get plumbed out the back side and it actually breathes through here. So in most uh, router tables, like here's my, my other one, this is from Rockler. This is just a regular router that is normally meant to be used inverted of this, the bit going down by hand up on top of a surface. And so the, the dust is usually at the opposite end, but down here is one of the main breathing holes. It kind of sucks air in through the bottom of the router and when it's inside a dust box, even with good dust collection, some dust can fall down and then get sucked back up into the motor and it kind of chokes on itself if you don't really, really have good suction pulling dust out of the box. Well, that design right here with Jessam gets rid of that whole problem. This is only ever cl breathing clean air. And I think that's a really clever solution to that. Um, here you can see little dust collection at the bottom, even the dust box is sloped downhill slightly at the back. So it goes to that channel back there. And then it splits 
and this is the four inch hookup that I'll hook my hose up to. And that sucks out of the box. And then there's a, is that a two and a half? I think that's a two and a half that you could also connect to the fence and I need to come up with a hose for that. But um, for this operation, I'm not even gonna use this. I'll actually just cap that off and it'll just suck straight down in here. So we're about to test this for the first time. It also has an external speed controller, which is really nice. So I can kind of adjust the speed on the fly once we're up and running. And we're about to see how this thing works. So, uh, not too shabby. That, that was really impressive. That motor has all kinds of power and it runs really smooth. It's really stable. Uh, I'm really gonna like this thing. I am waiting on a set of uh, wheels that'll go on this so I can make it mobile. And it's the kind that flip up and down. So rather than just locking a caster, you can actually drop those feet back on the ground and make it really stable. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and make some cabinetry kind of like this one. You know, bit storage on the side all sorts of router junk in here and a little bit of tool storage. I think I'm gonna do a very similar thing here, except maybe I'm going to have two skinny cupboards that actually slide out. So really taking that bit cabinet idea and put it on tracks and slide it out the front. And it's wide enough, I could probably have a bit on both sides. I don't know if I need that much or not, but I think that's probably how I'll go about doing it. And then there'll be a small, uh, deep drawer on the bottom. But anyway, that'll be a project for another day. Really excited about this. And uh, time to keep moving. Okay, so it got to be kind of a nice afternoon. So I wanted to have a quick win, little project. And I am on my probably fifth or sixth trip between the barn and the shop to grab one more little tool that I need to do the thing. Uh, if you've been with the channel a while, you'll recognize the archery target. Uh, I had to do a little bit of maintenance and no, it is not dissolving in the rain. It's actually doing quite well. This is still the same sheet of OSB that I painted. We do have a little bit of flaking going on, but not a big deal. The issue is the wheels, the tires, the whatever you want to call them, the hard rubber wheels that I had on there, uh, that target's relatively heavy and they got a flat spot on them. So now it's really hard for me to roll it around and move the target because of this big heavy flat spot because the target is a little bit he uh, heavy. Yeah, yes, yes, bok bok chickens, bok bok. Um, it's a little bit heavy, especially when it kind of gets some water stuck inside it. So I'm putting on some heavier duty wheels and I'm widening out the stance just a little bit while I'm at it so that it's a little less tippy if I'm trying to drag it around behind the four-wheeler or something. Um, I did reface it about a week ago. The, the face, this is just like a vinyl banner from some company. It's on the inside. I don't know who it was. Uh, makes for a really good target face, and I just had to replace that because you eventually shoot it out after hitting it a whole bunch of times. But otherwise, this thing is really unchanged since the day I built it. And this is the second one. The first one is still back in Wyoming. All the videos are out there if you want to see that kind of thing. But yeah, yes, 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 Bok Bok. We hear you. They like the sunshine too. We have, here we go. So these are five new chickens to the household. A friend of mine moved from the country to town and needed to rehome some birds. So these ones aren't used to our property and they're not used to being super free range yet. So when they separate themselves from our birds, I shut the door between the barn and the outside play area and get them contained so I can let my chickens that have been here their whole lives out and let them be free range. This time of year, they're tired of being cooped up too, so they're out. Yes, yes, Bok Bok, I hear you. They're out eating grasses and any bugs they might be able to find. This one is picking through the garden. 
I don't know what you're finding in there. It's pretty well picked over. All these birds have a pretty big attitude problem. Uh, I've had people ask, well, do you raise egg layers or meat chickens? And I usually tell them all chickens are meat chickens. It just depends on their attitude. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now oh, they're over by the steps drinking out of the dog water. I still like the chickens. I like giving them a hard time though too. Anyway, this, I needed an extension so that I could get down past the wheel and hopefully I don't have to keep walking back and forth at this point. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I don't know where we're at in the total overall storyline of today's video, but I am back working on the box blind again today. Uh, I've gotten a little bit further along. I've got some of the, sh the steel siding up. I've kind of figured out how I'm gonna do some of the parts here and there. I'll have that drip channel up above there to try to keep some water from trying to get in this window. And then I think I'm going to take a piece of steel on a hinge right up to that and kind of have it kick out and otherwise overlap this opening by quite a bit. And I think that'll keep any rain from really getting in there when the wind is blowing at one of the sides. I think that'll help. I don't know, but we're gonna try it. Uh, we got the back, kind of like Don, except for one little corner up. Gosh, pointing in reverse is difficult up there. I think I need to take that piece out um, I was trying to accomplish something a little bit different over here by the door, and now that I've gotten this far, I don't like the way it is. So I'm gonna take that out and put one that goes all the way up to the top, which means I have to cut an angle because it has to go diagonally on this side. Um, I had a few comments. I knew that this piece of steel, using it as a hinge, wasn't gonna last forever. Now, if I open this door 12 times a year, it might last a long, long time but it was providing so much resistance, it didn't really make sense to keep trying to fight it. So I did cut it right here at the door seam so I can get in and out while I'm working on it. And I don't have the answer for how I'm gonna try to seal that up just yet. Uh, again, I'm gonna have a drip channel on top to try to keep some rain from coming down the side, but that only leaves about 16 inches at the top that's getting deflected and then most of the six foot height is, is just bare wall. So some water is definitely gonna get in this hinge unless I can think of something smart to do about it. Oh well, it's still gonna last a long time. It doesn't have to be super pretty. Here's the front. Uh, I put the door on now. So the door is, uh, the door, the window is gonna end up opening like that and I'll have a kickstand that comes from the, the lid to somewhere down below to help hold that up and then it'll act like an awning when we're in there. And I think I'll do tin on the bottom and then a separate piece is gonna attach to this and overlap the bottom. And that is going to actually extend all the way from side to side. It'll make that door a little bit heavy, but it'll also provide just more protection from what's going on in there. At, at least that's my thinking. Uh, and then above the hinge will be another drip channel to try to keep stuff from coming in through the top of this and then just tin at the top. Um, as far as getting it out to where it needs to go, it's definitely getting heavy now. I'm sure I can tip it over with the tractor without wrecking it and dragging it out. But somebody mentioned actually mounting an old trailer axle up high up to the top. That way you could just pick it up at the feet and then just drive it around like a two-wheeled wheelbarrow. Um, but because of where I'm planning on putting it, I can't have it up there. I really need the face on the ground and the wheels or the skids or something down here because I'm going to have to push legs first 
up against a fence and then stand it up. So I just kind of started toying around with the idea of what to do down here just to, to push it into place without tearing the whole thing up. And I don't know if I can maybe mount a wheel to, um, to this front two legs or, or what. I'm still getting there. Uh, anyway, I need to keep working on this. Turkey season's coming up fast, and I'm really hoping to keep, keep my kids excited about it because I'm kind of training my own hunting buddies at this point. All right, back to it. Well, today is April 1st, yesterday was Easter, and yesterday I officially used up the last of the firewood in the house. And even though I think we're done with snowstorms finally, even though we just had that snow goose thing, I think we're done with snow, but we're not done with cold morning. So I need to get a little bit more firewood into the basement, usually I fill this trailer up four or five times and fill the basement. We just don't need that much and I don't need to have firewood sitting down there all year long. So I'm trying to just put enough, trying to just put enough in there to get me through to next, well, through the rest of the spring. So I'm thinking maybe just two of these little tiny garden trailers will be, be good enough, but throw in a little mix of, that's ash. Ooh, here we go. Look at the figure in this. Look at the nice grain. This nice unnecessary walnut is gonna get burned today. Um, of course, you've heard the saying, April showers bring May flowers. Well, it hasn't rained with the exception of that storm. It's been a very long time around here and now it's April 1st and here comes the rain. Well, I'm trying to load firewood. So, uh, Bit of a soggy operation, but it'll get down there and I'll get a fire started. And this little bit of wood will dry off in a hurry. There's some old oak. So we've got oak, ash, walnut. I know there's maple in here. I think there's hackberry in here. We've got quite the mixture of stuff destined for the fire. Took an old window out of this foundation so that now I can just pop that door out and there's a door on the inside. And now I can pretty easily just heave them down into the basement. There's actually a piece of cherry too. So we're gonna burn some cherry as well. All of it makes BTUs, all of it's nice and warm. Oak seems like a big chunk of oak burns the longest. So once I have the fire nice and hot, I like to throw just a big piece of oak or ash into that. And then it burns for a long time and I don't have to go refeed the furnace again. Um, we do have a huge LP tank out back. We have a regular gas burning furnace down there. And it usually pains me when it kicks on. My normal day is I get up kind of like six, maybe earlier, and I run downstairs and I start a fire. This is in the winter, of course. And I get the house nice and warm all day, feeding that fire a couple of times. And that usually lasts till sometime in the middle of the night. And we didn't have to burn any gas. Well, by the time I'm ready to get up in the morning, 
the uh, the gas furnace does finally kick on, and that's almost always my alarm clock. When I hear that kick on, I go, well, crap. I don't want to pay for heat. It's time to get up and get a fire started. So the last few days, knowing I was running out of wood in the basement, I kind of got a little lazier and a little lazier and let that furnace burn a little more and a little more. But I thought, you know what? We've still got a couple of weeks of, you know, 30s and 40s for a low. Might as well throw a little more firewood down there and not pay for heat. When I bring the big trailer full over here, I have a 10 foot long ramp that sticks way out the side and I can park the trailer up here. And then my kids hop in the trailer and just throw into the ramp and it's as fast as the three of us can go, we can load and unload a trailer down this thing. But it's not really worth setting up the ramp for this little bit of wood. Since it's raining, there's bugs and birds out. I'll just shut that while I go get another load. Well, here's the mess I made for myself. It's not a huge pile, but it'll last. That'll get me through the spring. I don't think I'll even stack it this time. There's enough airflow in there. It'll dry out pretty good. I'm gonna get a fire made in the old wood furnace and that'll heat this whole basement up really well. That'll dry all the little bit of rain that was on there and we'll be good to go. And I think I'm gonna start with you, Walnut. You're going in first. 